Coming to you from Crash Studios in Music City, USA, Nashville. This is the Rich Redman Show. On this episode, rising star, hilarious comedian, who's always having a good time, Dusty Slay. And now, Rich Redman. What is up, everyone? Rich Redman here. This is another exciting episode of the Rich Redman Show coming to you from sexy Nippers Corner America. As always, I'm joined by my trusty sidekick, co-host, co-producer, Jim McCarthy. Good to see you. How you doing, man? I'm doing well. You know, this is kind of a, a, a gag. Um, I've been well, I've been with you all day, actually. Yes, yes. Because <laughs> when we're in town, we record four or five episodes a day. We knocked down the fourth wall just now. So. <laughs> we totally did. Yeah. But um, I'm so excited because we have have a funny man with us today and he's taking the world by storm he's been in nashville six years he's all over the boob tube really great guy Funny man, Dusty Slay. Right. Yeah. How are you, my friend? Uh, great. Thank you yeah. so much for coming and joining us. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah. I bet you hear that every time someone says your name. That, yeah. That, just that, cheers. Yeah. Right. Just a crazy applause. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're an upbeat guy. Yeah. You're I, actually your bio says that you're that you're uh, overly enthusiastic and positive. Well, I try to stay. I don't know. I didn't know my bio said that, but uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, it says you're an observational comic, but you are definitely highly positive. Yeah. Well, I try to stay positive. You know. I think that's good. I mean, keep it simple. There's, you know, there's that whole thing with comedy that it's it's darkness. Yeah. Well, that's what people always say. They always say that we're sad and suicidal, and yeah, I don't feel that way at all. Not you. No, Not I yet, feel great. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Give it some time. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait till the end of the show. Yeah. You are you are a happy guy. Yeah, I mean, I used to work at the Home Depot back then. I felt a little sad, but uh, I didn't actually work for Home Depot, but I was in there. I'm so lucky because I'm not a handyman. So when I get it, I am lost when I go in there. Yeah. Were you? They have signs. I know, but yeah. when you have to find a little widget that's very specific, you have to seek somebody with that orange vest. Yeah, and they're never, <laughs> they're rarely help happy to help rarely and trying to find one of those people with the orange vest is like trying to find big Ford of the abominable snowman or, yeah. or the Loch Ness yeah I would was a sales rep for both the Lowe's and the Home Depot and they say that they have the Lowe's walk where it's where you walk real fast with your head down so that you don't make eye contact <laughs> with the customer right so no one can flag what, you down what's the deal with Lowe's and Home Depot always being across the street from each other is it the same parent company what is that I don't know what's happening yeah they're just like Home Depot's like, oh, there's a Lowe's over there. Let's open up. Yeah, let's, we'll, sh we'll show you. Yeah, let's don't try to capitalize on business in another part of town. <laughs> yeah. And there's a strategy behind yeah. it. Yeah. There is. Well, it's always it's always like the fast food. Yeah, McDonald's and Burger King. Look right same across thing. the street from each other. Yeah, exactly. same colors. So, guys, this is, you know, this podcast we tr we try to focus on, yeah, we, def we definitely try to accentuate the positive, but we're talking to musicians, producers, authors, thought leaders, and comedians. And you're a second comedian. We Our first comedian we had was uh, Miss Victoria Jackson from Saturday Night oh, yeah. Live. Yeah, and I did a show with her one time. She lives in Nashville. Yeah. And I took a um, I took a comedy class with her, and she's she's so funny. She's so self deprecating. She thought she was a a horrible teacher. She turns out she's a fantastic teacher. She goes, I don't know how to teach it. So her, her thing is, she we, she just got up and said. Five minutes of stand-up comedy. Who wants to go? We had these little name tags on. She goes, Rich, five minutes. And I was like, I didn't know we were doing stand-up tonight. She goes, just start talking about something you know. So one of my day jobs is, um, you know, I'm a motivational speaker for corporate America. So I talk to, you know, Fortune 500 companies about how to be successful and have happy employees. And they usually are happy to listen because I play the drums and people love drums. People love drums. It's the man's, it's man's first instrument. Yeah. You know? So anyways, I got up and she said, just start talking about something new and so I started doing my kind of speech and then I grew into some other things and she's like you need to do a stand up special about the back side of the music business the back door of the music business because there's no, been, never been a comedian that has done something that's a musician that's like you can't poop on the bus I don't know if you know that but I do know that yeah. <laughs> I do know that but yeah uh, I think yeah I mean there was uh, Fred Armisen did a thing called yeah. stand up for, for drummers, drummers. <laughs> which I, I don't know anything about drummers. I stand but, up for drummers. But I thought it was fun. I liked yeah. it. Yeah. And my favorite part is when he kind of went through the, the history of the instrument. Yeah. Um, great. You got a gig tonight, right? I do have a gig. Yeah. Thanks I'm at for, Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for joining us all the way out here, man. Yeah. Thank great. you. Yeah. This is great. I'm happy to be here. 
So uh, the show tonight, uh, this is it's going to be old news by the time this airs. But is is it a regular recurring thing you're doing at Zanies? Yeah, I do a monthly show. Oh, it's monthly. Okay. Where I just nice. try to bring in some comics that I know that are friends or people that I worked with, yeah. and then I headline. So, That's great. And it just, uh, yeah, it gives me a chance to work on some new jokes. So they do the dirty work of warming everybody up, and then when everybody is nice and drunk, and you come out and kill Yeah, them. well, yeah, kind of, yeah. But <laughs> a lot of times, though, I'll host, too. So uh-huh. I, I bite the bullet at the beginning, mm-hmm. I open the show, and then I host all, I mean, I just, I'm very selfishly make it my whole show. That's great. Yeah, then I pepper some people in. Yeah, I, well, I have the name written down here of the show. It's the Dusty Slay's Grand Old Comedy Show. That's right. Yeah, rip that name from the Grand Old Opry. Now, haven't you been making appearances <laughs> out there at the Grand Old Opry? I have. I've done nine shows at the Grand Old Opry. Now, that's a- Actually, you could say ten. I mean, I did nine yeah. nights. This past, I did the Ryman on yeah. Friday for the first time. It's such an iconic room. Yeah, I did two shows that night. I mean, did you pat yourself on the back and say, hey, this is good? Yeah, I feel great. I mean, the first time I did the Opry, I mean, I couldn't even sleep. I went home and just listened to country music all night, and I just, I love it. Yeah. And, uh, uh, now, you like traditional country music, right? You probably don't like my brand of country music. Well, I like a lot of it. I mean, <laughs> some of it is bad. I like a, you know, I don't like to criticize any. I mean, some of it's just not for me. Right. But well, I, mean, I do like the old stuff. I mean, I like old everything, though. I mean, 90s and back. I like 90s movies, 90s TV shows. I mean, I'm 90s and back. Okay. So you were telling me, is it public knowledge? Can I say your age? Sure. Yeah, Thir- I don't Okay. Care. You're not like a, a female actress. 37 years old. 37, yeah. Which means you were Makes born sense. in... 81. 82. Okay. So you were you were an early teen when in the 90s when those movies were on. Oh, yeah. I mean, 90s, that's my, that's my that's, era. That's your jam. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. for me personally, I was born in 1978, Dinosaurs Roam the Earth. And so when I was a teenager, I was listening to... New New Wave, which was the second oh, yeah. British invasion, and heavy metal. Oh yeah! But I think that the best music of all time. I don't know if you guys, I personally, is for me is from 1969 to 1981. That's some of my favorite music. I mean, I like the late 60s, early 70s mm-hmm. stuff. I mean, I like classic rock. I mean, I guess that's what that's called now. But uh, yes, is. classic yeah. rock is all the the bands. So you have uh, the Zeppelin, the Beatles, the. Yeah. Yeah, I hate classic rock stations now because I feel like they've been playing the exact same songs for They're 20 oldies. years. Yeah. They're Jim oldies. used to be a classic rock radio station DJ. I, I don't know if you can tell by the sound I mean, of his voice. When, in the 90s and the early 2000s, classic rock stations were awesome to me. But now it's yeah. like, we can we can find other Led Zeppelin songs other than, than Hey, Hey, Mom, I said, you know, yeah, there's I mean, a lot. whatever that song is called. Yeah. But uh, Those are the ones that test. Yeah. yeah Black guess, Dog. Uh, Black Dog, yeah. yes. I mean, there's others. We can do others. We can do better. Yeah. So now, what's what's your joke? And if you have your hat off, people say, "Oh, he has long hair." Well, I say, uh, you know, with his hat off, people say, uh, "Oh, I bet that guy likes rock, rock music." And roll. With his hat, they're like, "Oh, he's got a rock collection." <laughs> <laughs> now, there, there's one comedy record I think you have with a, a nice kind of yuppie short hair. Yeah, my first album, "Making That Fudge," yeah. uh, came out in 2014, and, and on I, the cover, you're you're I'm stirring up salad. money. Oh, up money. I thought it was a salad. That's <laughs> how bad my eyesight is. Well, there's money in there because I was in this bank and this lady was talking to the teller and she said, lately, I've been making that fudge. <laughs> and and uh, cause we were in a bank, I thought, I interpreted that as slang for making money, you know, like making that bread, making that cheese. She was just talking about, she was actually, she worked at a fudge factory in town. Yeah. This was in Charleston. They the fudge factory sounds like a gay club. I know, I know. Yeah, she was. Yeah, she was making that fudge, and so I always say, you know, because she was in a bank, I yeah. interpret it as slang for making money. If we were in a doctor's office, I would have thought something completely different. <laughs> <laughs> so I got the dad jokes out of the way, so I don't use them on air. But 2018 was a groundbreaking year for you. You went on, you doing the Tonight Show with Fallon. You did Kimmel. You got this great stuff happening with the Opry. You did the Montreal Comedy Fest. Is that right? Yeah, the Just for Laughs Comedy Festival. Right? And I saw you on David's. Spade. Yeah. How's da- how's David? That show was awesome. I mean, yeah. I love David Spade. I'm yeah. such a huge fan. I did a uh, a podcast and my manager heard me on the podcast say that I liked David Spade, so she booked me. Is that Judy show. Marmel? Judy Marmel, yeah. So the my connection with Levity Live is that my ex-wife is a touring psychic medium and okay. she is managed by Judy Marmel. Oh. Oh man, you know what? I and bet we did a show together. Cindy Kaza. I bet the three of us did yeah. a show together at Zany's. Me, you, and Cindy. I opened for her one time. Yeah, and did my group. And it was a drummer, just a drummer. 
And I felt like it was such a, like, not that it was bad that we were in a comedy club, but yeah. maybe comedy wasn't the opening that she needed. It was, we, that's crazy <laughs> that that probably happened because we're probably looking back now about four years ago. That's at least 2015, yeah. So I had a, um, a, a group with Colby Calais' drummer called Strike That, and we would play like home furnishings and office supplies, and we would make music out of it. So I'd be like, get the filing cabinet and the tape dispenser. <laughs> <laughs> and we would open for the opener. Okay. So that probably happened, yeah. bro. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, because I did that show and I thought afterwards, like people were crying in the audience, like not for my performance during Cindy's performance. <laughs> and I thought, <laughs> this is too emotional of an audience for the jokes that I just did. Yeah. They're in a fragile state. And here All I right. am talking about working at the Home Depot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they were in a fragile state because they're trying to, you know, contact their, their lost ones. Yeah. They're lost ones. Yeah. And now what's going on with Nashville Squares? Because I saw the, the ad for this and, and our song Crazy Town is actually, it's either the theme or they're using to promote it. I don't know. I, I just filmed it. It's out in LA. They filmed Nashville oh, they filmed Squares it in, in LA. In LA. In and, Burbank? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Burbank. And I, you know, I had a good time on it. I thought the show's fun. I mean, my episode, I had Marie Osmond, Gary Busey, uh, Bob Saget. Um, what's Gary Busey looking like these days? He's looking wild. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he is not looking good. I think he used to play drums Did before he? he became an actor. Oh, okay, yeah, with his teeth. There's a rumor going around like that. And then look at this, man. There's a lot of feathers in your cap. I, but when, but it, they cut all my jokes out of Nashville Squares. I think my good jokes they yep. cut them out. My friend watched it. He said he liked it, and I said, "Do they do this joke? Do they do this joke?" And he didn't. They cut them out because mm. I said, "Because Gary Busey is on there. I don't know where he's from." But then they had the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders, and I nice. said, "Nothing makes me think of Nashville like Gary Busey and the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders." Right? <laughs> and uh, you know, because we have a, a football team here in Nashville as well. I don't yeah. know if we have cheerleaders, but I think we do. We do. The yeah. Titans. But yeah. I think we could maybe work those in for Nashville squares. <laughs> right? <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, right. Te- Dallas is in Texas. Yeah. You know? What's that all about? I don't I don't get it. I, I have a nice picture of me <laughs> and the entire Dallas cheerleading squad from 2005. It was, uh, we played the, like, uh, the halftime of one of the Thanksgiving games or something. Okay, yeah. And, and, I, and it was very opportunistic for us, but we were like, you know, we we're in our early touring days with the Aldine band. And I was like, Get the camera. Oh, yeah. yeah. So we snapped it. It was good. Yeah. I mean, I'm not upset that the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders were there. Like, it doesn't make me mad yeah. Yeah, at all. Yeah, because usually the best looking I mean, ones. I was pretty excited about it, but it yeah. doesn't make sense. Is all I'm saying. <laughs> just for just for the continuity of the whole thing. Yeah. It didn't go into that fudge salad very well. No, it yeah, did it not. <laughs> oh, fudge. <laughs> well, what I was going to say is that Variety Magazine voted you one of the top comics to watch for 2019. That's got to feel pretty good because past honorees have included Zach Galifianakis, Pat Oswalt, Tiffany Haddish, and Amy Schumer. Not bad shoes to be. Yeah, feels it's, great. Right? No, pr- no pressure. You know, yeah. you, work, you work hard. Do, do you feel a pressure to be funny at all times? You know, I don't in really. Life? I don't really feel that pressure now what, because I feel like comedy, like it, before I did comedy, I felt like I needed to be funny all the time. I feel like I, I needed to validate myself by being funny to everyone. Now that I get this outlet, I feel like that I'm probably too serious most of the time. Right. But uh, yeah, I mean, I feel like my comedy can just speak for itself and I don't have to be, do- I mean, I used to fall, I would trip and fake a seizure, you know, to get laughs. Was that like the early days of? Oh yeah. yeah. Not on stage. I mean, this is just in my life. In your life. Just trying <laughs> just, to make friends. You know? yeah. Just trying to get through the day. <laughs> yeah. it, it, it's a great icebreaker. It is a, it's a great way to attract the opposite sex and to like open doors. Yeah. It really is. Falling yeah. down? I mean, just being able just to take humor. a fall, you know? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. humor. Like a slapstick or something. So you're, you know, you're making the publicity rounds. You're probably very sick of talking about your trailer park upbringings. Uh, no, I, I mean, I don't mind talking about the trailer park. I tell you what it is like when I go do morning TV. What should I avoid? Uh, no, question? no, nothing. But no, when I do morning TV, they always read off my bio and they always go, no, no, no. They go, uh, They'll read the f- opening line, which is, you can take the boy out of the trailer park, but uh, we can't. You can't? <laughs> oh, my God. So uh, obvious. Is there a want, want, want in there, Jim? There's something well, here. Hold on. I don't, I don't mind that being in the bio, but there. reading it every time. Yeah. Just right off the teleprompter. Yeah. Now, is this pronounced Opelika? Opelika, yeah. Opelika, Alabama. Opelika, Alabama. And, you know, hey, you, and you, and you're, this is your mom and two sisters, right? Yeah. 
And it said that you grew up on Lot 8 in Moore's Trailer Park. That's true. That's That was your address. That is true. Yeah. That's the worst part about living in a trailer park is the address, right? Because people will tell me, oh, I grew up in a trailer. And they'll be like on some land. Yeah. And I'm like, well, that's not the same, <laughs> yeah. right? Because the trailer's fine. Yeah. My life was fine. It's yeah. when I go to school and anytime I have to write my address down, it's a lot eight Moore's trailer park. <laughs> if you live on some land, you got a regular address. Right. Yeah. That's all I wanted in life was a regular address. <laughs> well, you got it. You I, told me you just moved to Hermitage. Yeah, now I have a regular address. It feels good. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, as a kid, I mean, like, I was just like, man, I just don't want people to see more. Like I even had friends over. It didn't bother me. I wasn't ashamed of it. I was just ashamed of the address. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Life in Alabama. Man. Yeah. I mean, my dad lives on a farm. He, he uh, so my parents got divorced when I was two. I like to say they got huh. divorced when I was two and then there was a custody battle and my mom lost. So I had to go live with her. Got <laughs> <and>, uh, <laughs> Yeah. But, uh, um, but yeah, I mean, it's great. I mean, I loved living in a trailer park. We had a great time. If I could get that address, which I'd still be there. Man. Um, did, I'm sure they're very proud of you. Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's hard did, to say. Did you get day. back? Did you get uh, back? Yeah, I go back once. You know, and I brought, since I've been doing the Opry, it's really helped a lot. I bring my, my brought my mom up to see me at the Opry. I brought my dad up yeah. to see me at the Opry. So now it looks good. Now I'm looking good. That's really good. The Tonight Show and the Opry help a lot. Yeah, the Opry is, I mean, what what a uh, validating thing to, like, just to be performing right where Patsy Cline stood in that little circle of wood. Right, yeah. You know, in the stained glass Mother Church of Country Music. Yeah, David Spade show doesn't do much for me with my parents, right? <laughs> So like who's David Spade? Right. I I love Rules of Engagement. I yeah. love that show. He right. was such a little twerp. Actually, that's what my stepmom said. She was like, "Wasn't he on that?" Show? That's where she knows him from. Yeah, Rules of Engagement. Great show. Yeah, I never. I don't know that I ever watched that one. Mm. The nice thing of the Farley movies. Yeah, you know, Black Sheep. Mm-hmm. Mm. Tommy Boy. I'm a sitcom man. I've been watching sitcoms since uh, Joe Dirt. Uh, Three's Company. I mean, you're too young for Three's Company, but Jack, I remember it. Yeah. Jack Tripper, you know, John Ritter was such a physical comedian had, and uh, his timing was impeccable. And I've seen every episode a million times. Don Knotts, the landlord. Don man. Knotts. He used to break the wall. He'd be like, <laughs> that was that was Mr. Roper, the Mr. Roper look. Yeah, Don yeah. Knotts. Oh my Mr. god, Mr. Roper. He was like he was the king of patting himself on the back. Don Knotts is so great. If you go back and watch Andy Griffith, just, I used to watch it all the time as a kid, but just as an adult, you really can appreciate Don Knotts. Mm, yeah. He's so good in that show. Who were some of your other uh, comedic inspirations? The, the the well of comedy that you kind of gleaned stuff from. Well, you know, I growing up, I, I listened to Jeff Foxworthy a lot. I mm-hmm. mean, it's like I was in middle school when Jeff Foxworthy came out. He was doing the you know, might you be, a might redneck. be a redneck, and I'm living in a trailer. Yeah, and I always say that I've been saying this a lot, but I always say you know he had us walking around saying you want to and all right like we weren't already saying it. You know what I mean? It's like what we were already saying. Yeah. Now we're we're like heightening it. We're yeah. like when we're regular, we just say you want to. We're like you want to. Like we're really putting emphasis. Well, on he it. he brought that to the public awareness from people living in cities. Yeah, I mean, the thing that really blew my mind was the thing where he's like, you got some dogs in the yard, you run out on the porch and go, get on out of here, right? And it's like, that's exactly what we would say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right, it's like, how do you nail it like that? Yeah, because Jim and I are both originally from Connecticut, but then when in 80, 81, I moved to El Paso, Texas. And so when you go to Texas, you are going to pick up on y'all. But oh, yeah. I still feel like a lot of even... Uh, e- Easterners where uh, say y'all. It's just a thing. It's just oh, an yeah. American thing. Yeah, I don't do y'all as much anymore. I used to do it all there the time, go. but then I waited tables mm-hmm. and I just felt like I was saying y'all a million times. I'd be like, y'all need anything? Let me know if I can get y'all something. Yeah. Y'all doing okay? Yeah, y'all doing, yeah. And I just was saying it so much. I thought, yeah. you know what? Let's let's try to use some other stuff once in a while. And then I started saying you guys and then everybody's offended now about you guys. So I might go back to y- y'all Everyone's offended with you guys now People because get it doesn't a, include females? Well, I guess I had some women tell me one time, they were like, we're not guys. And I was like, I, oh, I just, oh, so, it was just a thing I was, uh, yeah, not, and I, so I was just so like, maybe difficult. I'll just force it, force you all back in. Everyone has, it's so, everyone's so temperamental these days. Everybody's offended by everything. I know, it's hard. The, uh, um, yeah. It's like, I didn't even real. I, I wasn't even thinking about it in that sense. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, I didn't even realize what I was saying, I guess. So yeah. I'll go back to y'all. I, I could You know, all. Maybe like, I'll do a you all. You guys will go over. You're, you're doing New Brunswick, New Jersey for like the next 10 days, it seems. I was just looking on your website. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm going tomorrow. I'm just doing, yeah. I'm doing five shows, but yeah. 
Yeah, so the way uh, my how do they accept you up there? I mean, it's like the heart of you know mafia land. I've never been. Tracked. Never been. We'll see what happens. <laughs> this is my first time. I mean, you got some Have fierce fun. tour dates. I mean, I was looking through all your December's. I mean, you're you're gonna take Christmas off, Christmas Day, and the next day you're out. You're somewhere, right? Oh yeah, I'm all over the place. And yeah, I mean, 2020 is really lined up. I don't have any of those dates on the calendar yet, but it's it's lined up. It's fierce. Yeah. How Ooh. many per year? Or how do you? Think I mean, you year? know, the next the first four months of uh of 2020 every weekend i'm doing a gig wow i mean it's like so it's like i'll I'll usually be off monday through wednesday but a lot of times i go out to la take meetings to try to you know get shows yeah you know i'm going uh, i don't know if i can say but i will go back on the david spade show soon so nice and then you have a show in development on abc well i had i sold a development deal to oh you sold it i sold one but i don't think they're going to do it i mean we wrote a script Mm -hmm. but i i have been working on a cartoon for oh. a, potentially a trailer park cartoon. No, oh, that's great. Which I'm excited about. Nice. Yeah. Wow. I had a other show kind of work and we kind of pulled back on that just because we want to we want to do it the right way. I have a real I, real good idea for a restaurant show and uh, it wasn't going the way that I wanted it to go and I don't want to do it if it's not that way because I think it's I got I think it's a fun idea. So you sold the idea that you were working on with the guy from Santa Clarita Diet? Yes. Okay. Well, we sold the de- so they bought the development deal and then we go write a script. I had never done this before, but so I learned all this. But yeah. you know, so then you write a script and then you get a bunch of notes and then you make the changes and then you get more notes and then you make those changes and then they go, "Ah, well, I don't think we're going to do it." And I'm like, "Oh, okay. Well, maybe we didn't make all those changes." <laughs> so and then they just made they might put it on a shelf it might come down again off the shelf yeah it could i mean and actually it was really great i mean i'd like to work with everyone all the people at abc they were so nice i mean every time i went in they were laughing they loved it they were like one time they said we live really love these characters you've created and i'm like well these are real people. <laughs> yeah, I changed the names to protect their 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 feelings yeah. and likenesses. Yeah, so true. So and one one pilot that we wrote the first uh, script and they were like, "This seems too sad. This seems too serious." And I was like, "Oh, okay. This is not doesn't seem sad or serious to me." But I think just some people, anything that's kind of poor, depending on how you grew up, anything that's kind of poor seems sad. Mm-hmm. And. Uh, and so it's like my whole episode was like my sister got pregnant when she was like 19, which is not bad for Alabama. And uh, <laughs> that's a late start. Right. But she, uh, but she, she's a very serious diabetic. Right. So that she was not supposed to get pregnant. Right. That was the, you know, so it was like, that was the episode. I thought that would be a good way to kind of get into kind of some stuff going on and they thought it was too serious. Too like, heavy. Oh, yeah. And I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, because my I have a friend, um, Tracy Katsky, and she was one of the executive producers on Santa Clarita Diet. And she's a bass player. She loves to slap at the bass. Yeah. And so I'll go to, over to her, you know, place, and we have these, you know, jam sessions. And the next thing I know, there's all these, like, comedic actresses showing up from like Will and Grace and you know because oh, yeah. they all like to sing and play music for fun that's their hobby and then here I am and they're like what do you do I was like oh you know I play this guy Jason Allen and they're like what oh my god that's crazy and then they'll pull up a video of me playing or something like oh my god it looks like you love your life <laughs> <laughs> I wish acting was like that because because it's so stop and go stop and go stop and go we're Sarah all right breaking for lunch resetting lights hurry up and wait yeah there's a lot oh, of hurry yeah. up and wait um, yeah, that's a, yeah. I mean, that's why I love Nashville. I think it's yeah. great here. So you're you're not gonna um, bite the bullet and, and move to sunny Los Angeles. You're gonna stay set up here. I don't want to move. I love it in Nashville. Yeah. I mean, I you know I got uh, you know the Opry is starting a network. They are you know huh? and, really? uh, called the Circle. Wow. Hmm. And uh, and we've that's already, great. We filmed some stand up stuff for that. Mm-hmm. I mean, I love it. I think Nashville's doing great things. I think a Netflix special will be on your horizon, right? Doesn't every great comedian work towards that? Well, I think so. I mean, I think some sort of special will come. Mm-hmm. I mean, I haven't filmed it, but I'm I'm also not in any rush. I don't feel any pressure for anything. Yeah, I feel. I mean, my calendar's lined up. I feel great about my stand up. I'm I'm not in any rush. I feel good about every. I mean, you know, I'm doing colleges. I'm doing corporate gigs. I'm doing clubs. I love it. Yeah. I mean, I'm doing festivals. There's any kind of stand up, I'm doing it. Right. Now you've got that 90 minutes of stage time every night. What's, how's the road treating you? Cause like, you know, as a touring musician, it's like, you know, that idle time could be the devil's playground, you know? Oh yeah. I mean, it gets boring, Yeah, but I don't drink or anything like that. I quit drinking a while back, which right. is great for me. That was good for you. Yeah. Because but what, what were the telltale signs? You're like, I need to, is that a funny story? Or? Well, yeah. I mean, who knows? I mean, but I, 
<laughs> I just, you know, I used to, I, there's just no off switch for me. Once I get started, I'm just drinking. And I, you know, I'm always having a good time and then suddenly I'm not, right? Suddenly, me and my friend used to call it going to the dark side, right? It was like mm. where you would Was just, it brown? Was it the brown stuff? <laughs> yeah, you, well, yeah, I mean, anything really. But what would happen is I'd start off with a few beers, we're having a good time, and then I'd do a couple of shots and then we're like, we're really having a good time. And then suddenly one shot just sends you into this place where your eyes just kind of gloss over and it seems like you're there you're awake but you're not you're not in there yeah. anymore a lot of times i would black out but still you know still be living living yeah. life blacked out missing <laughs> but, whole but you don't know and then you have to get the information from your friends this, right. do you know what you did last night oh i got that so much yeah and we used to party. I mean, we loved it. I mean, it was such a good time. But I, you know, at the at the, I just started feeling bad. I got I got pretty heavy, and I was smoking a lot of cigarettes, and wow. I couldn't even tie my shoes without getting winded. And I thought, you know what? Let's give it a break. <laughs> Let's give yeah. it. A, at, did you just do it like cold turkey, or did you go? Yeah, to I just friends quit, of Bill. Or? I quit both. Actually, yeah. I quit smoking and drinking the same day, and then I, um, I dipped for about three days. Wow. I used to alternate. I'd smoke to my lungs hurt, and then I would dip to my lungs healed, and then I would. Uh, and then, but I, I dipped and then it, the dip was not doing me right either. So I ended up three days after that, I gave it up. And then that was seven years ago. And we were talking Good about cigars. Good for you. Yeah. We we're talking about cigars. Are those out of the picture too? Well, they've been out for about six months. I mean, I love cigars. So I was, you know, I was doing what we were talking about Schwarzenegger. I mean, I was right. doing the cigar a day. Cigar a day. Schwarzenegger thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, man, I love it. I like to go do a show. Once my show's done, go out on a patio somewhere, just have a cigar, reflect on the night. Unwind. Yeah, it's fun. It's very, oh yeah, I need it. I need to slow down. I need something like that. The problem is I just don't want the doctor to have to come along and cut my tongue out. That wouldn't be oh, very yeah. good. No. But I, you know, I like day drinking. That's my, the most fun on a sunny day. That's the only time I miss drinking is on a hot day on a patio somewhere. I'm mm. like, I'd love some drinks. After right you've now. mowed the lawn. Yeah. Oh yeah. Mowing the lawn or great feeling doing nothing. Now, aren't you think. married to a, 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 a actress? Well, my, my wife is, she was an actress a long time in Canada. Mm -hmm. uh, and then she moved down here and she was doing a little stand up in, in Toronto. She moved down here and started working the road like me and the road just burned her out. I mean, she was doing really good on yeah. the road but she just kind of got burned out of all the travel that's so much so she's taking a break yeah and uh but she's uh she's she's kind of toying with the idea of maybe getting back into it yeah and you guys are sometimes on a podcast together we're having a good time yeah we're having a good time dusty slay and hannah hogan yeah i've been a little slack on my podcast lately but uh, yeah, I, I, and i like how all the episodes are like three things like harrison ford cigars and menstruation <laughs> yeah, it's like three yeah. things <laughs> yeah but three is always the golden rule in yeah. comedy anyway Right? I try to t I try to get people. I try to entice them. Right? Yeah. Like what? What is it? You had me at menstruation. I mean, <laughs> yeah. come on. Yeah. So, but also, God, it was that was a that could be a horrible segue. Menstruation really makes me think about our sponsor. But no, I think a better segue <laughs> is we were talking about your comedic inspiration and people you draw inspiration oh, yeah. from. And like for me, you know, I when when I was coming up and I was learning music from some great some great teachers. Um, I'm a product to music education and it makes me think about our sponsor School of Rock are you yeah. familiar with School of Rock School of Rock yeah, yeah remember Jack Black the yes, movie yes. it's based on a real life thing where these schools are now there's 250 of these locations wow 80,000 kids from age 3 to 18 they can sign up they learn how to sing they learn how to play bass guitar keyboards and drums they go out and they learn the craft of music making by making music in public places they do concerts and our friends Angie and Kelly McCright are here at the Nashville and Franklin School of Rock. They want your kids to sign up, man. They drop your kids off. Folks, you're looking for a great babysitting situation? <laughs> a little free time for yourself? Pull up the minivan in front of the School of Rock. Dump your kids off for two hours. They're going to come out with increased self-esteem. They're going to learn an instrument. They're going to learn how to get along well with other kids. They're going to learn about time management. All these awesome life skills. So if you're interested in that, dump your kids off at the School of Rock. Send them an email, nashville at schoolofrock.com or franklin at schoolofrock.com. How about that? They're not a curbside daycare, though, you know, or orphanage, as what Phil Valentine <laughs> But you may need to sign up, right? Yeah. You don't just drop them off. Yeah, they, they do a whole lot more than just that. So. I mean, I don't know. I mean, you could just drop I mean, I don't know. You I could. Don't. Say, yeah, I don't Go know. play drums for two hours, kids. 
It's a great, it's a really great program, and they're doing it. Actually, they're having a they're a benefit. School of Rock is doing a benefit at the Ryman on January fifth, and I'm going to be the host and MC. I love it. I'm so excited. It's going to be go. great. Of course, hey, you will be. I, we got to oil that thing, Jim. Yes, we do. Well, what WD is the deal? I thought, I thought you were my producer. I thought, what the hell? Okay, get a little are, are you really giving me crap about this I'm right just now? Kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, so, is there something that's uh, on your mind that you've been dying to ask, Mister Dusty? Mister um, Dusty Slay. You know, I, I'm, I'm looking at the. Um, the tour dates and that really kind of got me interested about the New Brunswick thing. You've never been to the Northeast at all? No, I've been to the Northeast, just not New Jersey. I've been, I've drove through. A you know what bit. George Carlin always said about New Jersey, right? No. Which exit? Take her where it smells. Kiss her where it smells. Take her to New Jersey. <laughs> oh my God. That's what he used to say. <laughs> Jeez. But yeah, New was, Brunswick is, uh, I, I, I used to stomp around that area. Well, they say the stress factory is great. I did the stress factory in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Yeah. Which, uh, oh my gosh. Which was, uh, fun. Bridgeport seemed like a bit of a rough city. I'm it's, from Milford. Uh, You're from where? Uh, Danbury. Danbury, Connecticut, Milford, yeah. Connecticut. I've done Hart a funny bone in Hartford and now I've done stress factory in Bridgeport. Yeah. yeah. Bridgeport seemed like a rough place. It's it's one of those places that if the they give you directions, it'd be like, okay, go down this street, and at that light, you're going to see, you're going to make a left. It's going to say, do not enter, but go down that street anyway. That's that kind of a city. Okay. Yeah. Well, the club was great. I loved it. So, But the stress factory in New Brunswick is the original, so it's supposed to, the Bridgeport's pretty new, so yeah. I'm pumped to go. Stress factory. Stress factory, yeah. yeah. It'll be uh, Salt Lake. Salt Lake City. Salt Lake City, yeah. Wise guys. Yeah, I'll be there soon. I like Utah. Yeah, yeah. guys, check out uh, DustySlay.com. It's all right there. Yeah, I got all kind of stuff on there. I got videos. I do a lot of stuff on YouTube. I do some on the road uh, yeah. where I do some travel videos. I do it all myself. And uh, one friend helped me. One of them is really good. What do you just use your phone or you got a GoPro? I do or? a phone, a GoPro, a different camera. I got all kind of stuff. And I just try to edit it all together and yeah. make a hodgepodge of uh, of the trip. I just want people to know what I'm up to. I saw the one where you and your bride go to the Parthenon. Oh yeah, that was nice. the most recent thing. Yeah, yeah, that's fun. You been in there? I have all these years. It's like living in New York City and not going to see the Statue of Liberty. You've never been? There. It's creepy. Yeah, it's wow. creepy in there. I'm not a. I mean, I like to go, but it's creepy in there. <laughs> Did you see the statue? Yeah, the statue. That's the creepy part. <laughs> What's the statue? It's a 50 foot statue inside. Inside. Oh whoa. Maybe 40 foot. 50 maybe too it's tall. Big. It's big. Yeah. They have a six foot statue of Nike in the hand of Athena. Yeah. Wow. She's like the goddess of war or something. In I can't believe this is in our backyard and I haven't seen this. Great photo ops. Wow. Well, I'm a horror buff, you know, yeah. but I could, I could imagine that's well, it's just where something, a statue is so big that it's creepy. Yeah. And it's just a feeling <laughs> inside. It just, the moment you go in there, it just feels like almost like this thing is alive mm -hmm. and it's just, I'm not into wow. it. What are some other spots you've seen in, 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 on the road that are, that are memorable? Do you, are you the guy that's like, I'm going to go um, look for, you know, vintage rock and roll t-shirts or do you collect, now, collect things? I like to drive. I mean, I've been flying so much now, but I like driving. So I like to just see stuff. I like the mountains. I'm into the mountains, but no, I'm not so much of a sightseer. If I can see it from the car, I'm all about it. <laughs> nah. Yeah. I mean, but yeah, I mean, I, you know, I travel so much now that it's like, I don't know. I, I just like to, I like to see weird stuff. Mm -hmm. I like to see. Just things that I, I, I like to see, like what what you would say, like what the locals do. Right. I don't like touristy stuff so much. Yeah, you know, New York City, I'll do all the touristy stuff. Chicago, I'll do that. Yeah, I always try to find out what the locals do. Yeah, I don't have that kind of time. When I, you know, my my kind of modus operandi on the road is for the last 20 years has been you know we'll pull into city at like eight or nine in the morning, and then we have a sound check at three, and then dinner at five and then probably some sort of a VIP show at seven acoustically. And then I hit the stage at nine fifteen. So between 9 AM and 3 PM, that's where I'll go like teach drum lessons at the local drum shop or go speech, speak to some kids at a college or a high school. And with all the back and forth, I, my time is gone. I'm, I don't oh, get yeah. a time to do anything super fun. Maybe get get a workout in, go try to find a plan of fitness or something like that. Because hey, you do so much more than me. I mean, all of that. You're like, I don't have a lot of time. I teach. A, you may teach a class. Well, I go, uh, but I don't get to yeah. do the stuff. Right. You know, because you know, you got to find a decent gym because, like, the 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 gym at a Drury Inn isn't going to be anything. Right. It's going to be some. 
it was not master from, it was not Drury is a, is a weird name it sounds like dreary <laughs> yeah it, sounds it's a, it was dreary it was I just so stayed dreary. at one they're nice. they're nice they are nice but the name sounds dreary yeah, usually like. the equipment is like yes so they could put it on their brochure that we have a fitness room you go into the fitness room and there's an inch of dust on a Stairmaster from 1974 it's like or better yet it's chrome machines yeah yeah. Like the Chrome workout machines, oh, yeah, yeah. The machines the machines Nautilus. Are, yes, from the eighties. Exactly. The machines are crying. It's just God. sad in there. Yeah, it's like a little. Yeah, they're like, oh, please come in. <laughs> Where do you and your bride enjoy doing together when you're in rarely in town here? Well, to you know, I'm usually home like Monday through Wednesday, right? So when I leave, it's like a on, musician. Yeah, I leave on a Thursday. I fly, then I do a show Thursday night. I wake up super early on Friday, do press. And then, so the rest of my day's ruined. Then I do two shows on Friday, two shows on Saturday, usually out of there on Sunday. So I get home, I'm tired. Um, you know, we go out to eat. We do things like that. We watch, we've been watching Columbo together a lot. Uh, when it was originally on? The, oh the, no, the old... we, I bought the DVDs from okay, the case bookstore. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, we're not doing the most exciting things. but <laughs> It reminds me of the activities when I was married. Yeah, yeah my, my entire life is like performing mm -hmm. and entertaining people. When I'm home, I love to do nothing. Yeah, I love to get out in the yard and dig around out there. That's why I just moved into a house. I've been I've been living in an apartment for a while. Right. Now I'm able to get out in the outside. You're a homeowner. This is American dream. Yeah, and you brought a home hedges. with comedy. Yes, you know what I mean? It's like that the same true. thing like being a musician, you know? It's yeah. like the same path. It's and true. I mean, it's been a good year. I mean, 2018, 2019, I mean, I picked up uh, management and agents, and they really uh, turned my whole career uh, around. I mean, all these things are the Tonight Show, and uh, it's been, it's really turned it around. What was me. it like standing a foot behind those curtains that are that are about to swing open and millions are watching were you cool with it what were you thinking i mean the first time i did the tonight show i mean i was so nervous mm -hmm. i mean i think that i mean the guy the booker for the tonight show i mean i, I we got along great he yeah. really liked me i think he had full confidence in me yes. but seeing me right before I was about to go out, I think he was beginning to lose confidence in me. <laughs> I just was so nervous because I'm like, I just want to get this right. Did you I, did you do your, your set over and over oh, and totally, over and over? Yeah. Totally. So but the moment the curtain opens, mm -hmm. the nerve the nerves turn into adrenaline and I'm like, all right, yes. now we get into it. Now let's do it. Let's we're here for a purpose. Let's make it happen. So and, ten yeah, ten feet away is the first row of people. And Jimmy's right there, four feet away, and Questlove is three feet away on your left yes is jimmy watching the performance oh yeah he's right yeah. out there watching yeah i mean everybody is right there i mean yeah you're right the whole band the roots are right there yeah. and uh but you know by the time i went back the second time i had uh you know i'd already done this you conquered it so it's like the nervousness was almost completely gone right it's just like the opry i mean the first time i did the opry i mean i was so nervous and then after it every time now i'm like hey you know i've done this Let's go do it. When you do the Opry, are there musical acts on there as well, or is it just your show? Oh, yeah, full-on showcase. I mean, it'll be, it could be, like, one time I was there, it was Neil McCoy and then me. And mm -hmm. uh, Well, he's a funny guy. He I can know. do stand-up. Neil McCoy kind of ruined it for me that night, I think, because he really... He's good. He was good, and he really got, like, because I'm used to, you know, like, a serious, like, it's almost better if it's a super serious performance before me, mm -hmm. and then I get to go out and kind of break that up. But Neil McCoy was out in the audience, and he was just doing a thing. What a showman. I know, and I was like, oh, okay. I got to have him on the show. I got to have him, because he's a funny guy. He's a great entertainer. Yeah, he is a, he's, he's a great entertainer. He was great. great. Singer. I mean, yeah, so yeah. when I say he ruined it for me, I mean, he just he just was a performer. I mean, yeah, he, he rocked yeah. it. And so my my Joe, actually this time at the Ryman, I thought Mike Snyder. I don't know if you ever seen Mike Snyder at the Opry, but uh, yeah, Mike Snyder. He plays banjo and yes. does. Uh, he does, but he he did some jokes. He was crushing it. A wow. banjo playing funny man. Yeah, like Steve Martin. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Did you see that special with him and? Um, uh, Martin, Martin Short. Yeah, Martin Short. I didn't they, see it. They just kind of roast each other the entire oh, time. Yeah. I mean, I you know I had Steve Martin albums. And it's like, I, I always like like listening to Steve Martin, but seeing him for some reason is different, mm -hmm. unless it's in a movie, you know, but uh, Let's Get Small is an album I really like. Yeah. That's an inspiration for me. Steve Martin, Let's Get Small, such a good album. So just kind of off the wall, the notes, huh? not talking about anything. Like, I mean, that's my whole agenda with comedy, right? My agenda is to have no agenda, to just be telling jokes, right? I'm not trying to teach you anything. You're not, I'm not trying to... I'm not trying to educate you. I'm just out there to tell jokes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's what Steve Martin was all about mm -hmm. that I loved. Mm -hmm. And your comedy is relatively universal in the sense that it is 
mostly family friendly. There's a couple of, you know, masturbation things and stuff, but it's like, okay. But, yeah. But I think, I feel almost feel like you could be cl- completely clean if you want Oh, yeah. To. I don't even do those jokes. I always called them my lotion jokes. I don't the even- The lotion jokes, yeah. yeah. I don't even do those in my act anymore. They're, they're, I, yeah. I like them. Mm-hmm. I think they're very funny. I think it's the cleanest- uh, jerk off jokes that you could have uh, totally but yeah I don't do them anymore you know I just kind of okay. let that go and it it is mostly clean I make drug references I make some vague yeah, but sexual they, and references you're not dropping but, f-bombs and stuff oh no yeah no well I, just just for the layman for some people who are unfamiliar what are the uh, the clean jerk off jokes Oh well, now well, I'll tell you the I'll tell you the one right. I said, and I haven't told it in a while, so I may mess this up. But I said, uh, you know, I had a, uh, uh, oh no, and I don't even know if I can remember it. But I had a guy. He was he was talking about watching some adult films, right? He was a younger comic. I saw him on stage. He was talking about watching some adult films, and he was complaining about how slow the download speeds were. Oh yeah, and it really blew my mind because the first time I watched it. Uh, it was on a VHS tape, and my mm-hmm. biggest complaint was having to rewind it back to the place where my dad left it at. <laughs> <laughs> and the joke there, see, people can take that to a gross place if they want. Yeah, but right. the joke is that I found my dad's tapes. We weren't sharing a tape, yeah. right? <laughs> and you also got to see what turned your dad on, right. which is kind uh, of gross. Exactly, exactly. He's like, he wasn't like, yeah, you can use it, but rewind it back. No, it wasn't like that. You want to hear something really weird? I have a story for I you. Speaking of adult films... I had a buddy of mine that had a film of his parents. Oh, gross. Oh, no. And he played it for us. Oh, gross. What kind of friend is this? What kind of friends are you keeping? Isn't that weird? This is when I was like, you know, 13, 14 He stumbled across. And he would play it for us. That's gross. And they say. And his mom wasn't bad looking. Let me tell you something. And he's like, that's my dad. (laughs) Right. For for you guys watching it, it's probably a pretty good time. But he'd sit there and watch it with us. That's no, gross. Weird. You guys are. Uh, His mom was hot, though. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty. Sure. That's a pretty good time. That that, that I yeah that's, that's yeah. So I, for, I completely forgot about this was story. Was this guy not know. very cool? Like he was trying to get. No, friends. no, he was. He was kind of a cool dude. I mean, he was uh, uh, kind of like a sort of neighborhood bully in a way. But they, once you got to know him, he was okay. Oh, so in a sense, he's bullying his parents here too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's like it was. It was just one of those things. I, I mean, I, I think back to that. I'm going. Wow, I don't. If I ever stumbled across something like that, the last people I'd be showing are my friends. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to. I want to try and unsee that. Yeah, yeah. you can't you know? see it. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So for a comic, wow, that is weird. That's one of the weirdest things. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little, it's a little strange. <laughs> there's there's some material for you if you want to use it. Uh, I don't know how I would. Do you sell t-shirts? <laughs> you sell t-shirts? I do have t-shirts. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I took them off my store because I get tired of going to the post office. Uh, <sighs> I never have good interactions in there. Like it'll be three dollars one day, the next day it's seven bucks. I try to ask them and they lecture me. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, you know what? I'm just not coming back here. So yeah. it's, my store is still around, but you have to search for it. It's not on my website. Oh, but at live shows, do you travel around? Oh with yeah, that? yeah, yeah. I got shirts. I got hats. I got you CDs. ship it ahead. No, I I got I'm I'm Platinum Pro with American Airlines. Yeah. So I get two free check bags. Nice. And uh, <laughs> so I just take a merch bag and my actually I'll take a merch bag. And then I'll take a bag with uh, like a pressure cooker and some cooking supplies. You cook in your room. And then I'll cook in the room. And then I'll uh, have a, another bag because I get a, a two carry on. I get a, a you know, personal <laughs> item and a carry. So I'll take my clothes. So, let me, so they don't so flag you, you from a ple- pressure cooker? I know. That's what people always say. They act like, I think somebody made a bomb one time out of a pressure cooker. At the Boston Marathon. Yeah. And now they yeah. act like everybody's making bombs out of these things. What do you, what do you cook in a pressure cooker? I like to cook, <laughs> I'll, I'll cook chicken and some vegetables and uh, I'll do some rice and I'll make a, last time I made a, like a little chicken soup. It's quick. Yeah. Yeah. You ever have a pressure cooker? No, meat? never. I have oh a kind of crock pot. Crock oh, crock pot. It's like a crock pot, but faster. Yeah, it forces the heat and the moisture but, in. But so you, but so you're 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 flying to this new city. You got a hotel. Your day is free until you, unless you're doing press, and so you have to get an Uber or a taxi to the store to get your supplies to cook your dinner. Sometimes I'll walk, depending on how. Far okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I will get an Uber. Yeah, I'll go down there and get some. I hit to the Trader Joe's and uh, yeah, and then I will film it right, and then I put out this content. That's you know, great. Cooking in the kitchen. That's smart. I got so, one on my Instagram, a little video. I got another one that I'm about to release. Yeah. Speaking of cooking in the kitchen, I'm smelling something. Bills. Oh yeah. Well. We're having fun here, guys. We but are. hey, we got some bills to pay, so we'll be right back. The Rich Redmond Show will be right back. Learn 
and by doing, I definitely think resonates with what we're about here at the School of Rock. I'm Angie McCright, and I'm the owner of the School of Rock in Franklin and Nashville. I would say that the majority of kids that come in have either been sitting in their bedrooms watching YouTube, learning how to play, or they've taken music lessons at some point in their life. We do have a lot of beginners. It doesn't matter what level you're at. You can participate in our programs, whether you're a beginner or you're advanced. We don't teach music to put on shows. We put on shows to teach music. Connect with School of Rock today. Search School of Rock Franklin or Nashville. This is the Rich Redman Show. All right, we're back, guys. We are having some laughs here at Crash Studio. Um, you know, I, this thing with American Airlines, you have to be a platinum pro member to become an equal with Southwest Airlines for any Joe that travels on Southwest Airlines. You get two free bags and two carry-ons. Well, this is what I don't like about Southwest is this this idea that you don't get to pick your own seat. Yeah, you just first come first. Seat. I don't like that. Yeah. I'm not a fan of that. Now, I'm an A-list, which means I will get an aisle. Yeah, right. You Always. get to go first, yeah. I get to go first. Right. So, I mean, had I went first with Southwest, and maybe I will once, because, you know, it expires over time. I think you got to reset. I don't know. I can't imagine they just let it build up forever. Then everybody's Platinum Pro. They, they won't. I just became Platinum Pro. I was Platinum for a while, and I got two free bags with Platinum. And you get one free bag immediately Yeah. when you sign up for the card. But so You just put everything on the card. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, everything's on the card. That's that way it keeps a real record. And then I'm building up. I got so many miles. I mean, man. <laughs> I mean, I didn't fly a lot as a, at growing up, you know? Mm -hmm. So now I'm like, I'm like a real pro with flying. Mm -hmm. For a while, I was like a real road dog. I really learned to work the road. Now I learned to work the airlines. That's dope. Yes. So, You're in the air a lot, man. You, airborne. That's what I do. Airborne and emergency because, oh, yeah. and then a lot of hand sanitizer. Oh, yeah. I mean, big time. Unless, you know, you, you might have a super strong immune system. You're just oh, like- yeah. Roll it. Roll yeah, the I dice. don't know. I don't really do any of that. I'm big into the CBD, and uh, yeah. I'll uh, I'll use that for flights. Like oil? Or? And that feels good. Yeah, a little oil, you know, that you eat, and, uh, you mm -hmm. know, CBD or, you know, whatever. And uh, it's a good time. And, uh, you know, so that's what I like. I don't have any problems flying. I don't get sick. I don't feel like, I, you know, I'm not afraid of germs. I don't really, I don't really get sick a lot. Yeah. Once in a while, I'll, you know, I'll get food poisoning or something from some crap that I ate somewhere. Taco truck. Yeah. I actually was eating a taco and I bit, I was eat, I ate about half of it and I looked in and the ground beef was like still raw. Ugh. I threw up that day and- uh, Was it because you knew it was raw? I don't know. I don't, it's hard to say. I mean, instantly I felt nauseous. Oh no. But I threw up like a couple of hours later. Ugh. And I don't throw, I used to throw up every day because I would drink a lot and then I would- uh, <laughs> I just either throw up before I went to sleep or wake up and throw up. Because I never was, I, I have to make myself throw up because I would just black out. Yeah, I think that's either what happens. Either you throw up or you black out. Mm -hmm. And I'm a, I was a blackout guy. Is blacking out same as fainting? No. Well, it's or like fainting. Out? It's like your mind faints, but your body's still fine. Your body is partying, but you don't remember big chunks of your evening. Oh, okay, okay. Like I went to, one time, I lived in Charleston, South Carolina for 10 years. That's where, I grew up in Alabama. I lived in Charleston. And then I, I, I went to, I was in, like, let's say I was on the west side of town. And it was daylight, and I was driving to the east side of town. Mm -hmm. The next thing I know, I'm, I wake up driving back to the west side. I woke up hitting a curb and puncturing my tire. I had no idea where I had been or where I was going. You were sleep driving. I was sleep driving, but like blackout drunk driving. You ever, uh, you ever drive when Got you lucky. drive under marijuana? The marijuana? <clears throat> I, I've done that a couple of times. Yeah, it's tough. To say, yeah, I mean, you know, I mean. Don't call the guy out. That's a tough question. Well, no, no, I've, I've done that. We'll talk about that yeah. afterwards. But um, <laughs> I, um, no, I mean, I used to drink and drive all the time. Like, yeah, right? right? Like, I'm not. I mean, I was lucky. I flipped a car once, landed in, in, into a marsh, landed on the roof of the car. I had to crawl out the window. Yeah. And I, I lost my flip-flops. I was living in Charles. So it was tropical. Everything was tropical. Yeah, yeah. flip-flops. And I lost my glasses. So I'm blind. I'm drunk. I'm shoeless. It's December. I'm a little wet. <laughs> and uh, this guy, and my buddy's with me. His head's bleeding. And this guy pulls up. He's like, you need to ride home? I mean, my car is right out there in the ditch. He's just like, you need to ride home. We were like, yeah, we do. And he took us home. We went to sleep. 
Woke up the next morning, dealt with it. He was your drunk driving angel. Yes, he was. Yeah. It was amazing. Yeah, I mean, I've had all kinds of incidents like that, but I never hurt anyone. I barely hurt myself. I've been beat up. Uh, you know, I used to drink a lot, got beat up a couple of times. Star fights? Yeah, yeah, I mean, of course. Man, yeah, it's probably good you, you quit. It was I mean, after I'm, that one shot. Yeah, I mean, I'm mouthy. I mean, yeah, yeah it's, it's many shots, but you always blame the one. Right, the, the problem is shots. I just if you if you're yes. think, if you're sticking to you know co traditional cocktails, I think you're right. okay. Well, the thing is, I don't know how I would be now, right? Because yeah. I quit drinking at 29, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I may be in complete control, but yeah. the uh, the information that I have at hand says that I'll be worse than I was. Everybody I know that quit drinking that went back to drinking is worse. They're a total wreck now. Oh no, they have more money to spend on. It. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. So I don't need that in my life. Life. Mm -hmm. I feel great. Yeah, good. Good, good for, for you. you. Yeah. yeah, it's awesome. And and Charleston is where you tried your hand at at improv. Did you start with improv? I started comedy with improv, and then uh, yeah, then moved to stand up from mm -hmm. there. The first time I ever did stand up, I was in overalls, no shoes. That's that was my character that I chose to be. And 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 so there were some some stumbles, and when you were trying to find your voice. Yeah, well, I had a couple of good sets early right. on, and yeah. then I started, you know, I started bombing a little bit. So then I started drinking before I went up. Uh oh, and then I had some moderate success. I would bomb a little bit, have a little bit, of success. and eventually I just quit. I was like, "This is not fun for me." You, you have to bomb as a comic, right? Oh, yeah. To I learn. Bomb. Yeah, I mean, I bombed so many times. Like people, uh, like when I try to give them advice or something, people just seem to think that I've just always been the comic that I am now, right? And then I show them old videos of me and they go, oh. And then they'll say, well, this gives me a lot of hope. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, it should. I didn't start off this. Good. I mean, I always had good delivery, mm -hmm. but I wasn't good. I mean, I always knew how to tell a joke. I could always tell a joke, yeah. a street jokes and stuff like that. I could always do it. But I mean, that's that was some of my most fun drinking is getting together with buddies and just telling the street jokes that you know. Mm -hmm. That was so fun. But I couldn't write jokes. None of my jokes. I just make up all these crazy wild things and yeah. they were rarely funny. And then all of a sudden I figured out how to write jokes. I mean, I still write some jokes that don't work. Yeah. But sometimes just telling a story really funny, you know? Yeah. And squeaky microphones. Yeah. Well, a story, a really, I mean, it's, it's a really fun story is good, but it's like, if there's no payoff at the end, it better had been funny all along the way. Because if you're telling a long, drawn-out story and then the end is supposed to be a big punch. And it's not there. And it not, it's not there. Because the, the audience will give you the benefit of the doubt. You're taking them on a ride. They're like, we're trusting you. This mm -hmm. is going to be great. It's gonna be and payoff. then you get them there and then you don't deliver, they're out. But some stories have to have those little punches in them, right? The right. Little, you know, so you want to punch it up all along yeah. the way. Cause Jabs. A lot of my jokes are like that, right? Yeah. My joke will be funny all along the way, but then at the end, there is no real ending. Because it's been slightly funny the entire yeah. time. Yeah, and I'm like, and then we just move on. It's like sometimes, yeah. sometimes I feel like the audience is like, well, that was there was really no payoff there at the end. But it's like we had a good time the whole time. That doesn't yeah. need to be the big payoff. What do you think of like an extreme observationist like a Mark Maron who's mostly telling stories and ranting? I like Mark yeah. Maron. Yeah. I, you know, I'm I'm more of a fan. He had a TV show on Netflix. Loved it, man. I really liked. Yeah, it was because it was like really it was his life with yeah. actors. And when I did the Tonight Show the second time, he was on there as a guest. We talked. Yeah, really nice guy. Cool. Yeah, he was really nice to me. Because that's the great thing about comedy is like most of the time, if you're a comic, it doesn't matter how famous the other comic is. If they know you're a comic and you're like doing well at it, mm -hmm. there's like a mutual respect. Like if you're just an open micer, I mean, chances are they're not going to have the same respect because right. it's like you just started. Anybody could do an open mic. They want you to, to, to truly be a lifer. Right. And when they realize that you're a lifer and you're committed to the craft and you're willing to go through all the bombing, yeah. it's oh, yeah. like there's that mutual admiration society. Oh yeah. I mean, I bombed so much. I bombed so bad one time at a place. My first two jokes were such hits. I mean, people were banging on the wall. They were so good, right? <laughs> I love that. And then the, I had a 10 minute set. That was 30 seconds. Oh. The rest of the 10 minutes was total bomb. It got completely silent. So it would have been better to just do a three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. And then at one time I told a joke and one person laughed and it was my friend. And I, I was like, this guy gets it. And then when people <laughs> looked at him, he just turned around. <laughs> he bailed on you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> He's like, not me. I, I, yeah. Don't look very. I wasn't. I me. mean, we rode home together. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <I mean. laughs> 
<laughs> I love all the insights with with uh, you know even like the Pete Holmes uh, show crashing. Oh yeah, I loved that. Yeah, that was great. I mean, his episode on NACA. Everybody, that's the college auditions. Everybody yes. told me to watch that mm -hmm. before I did NACA, and it was like spot on. It's painful. I mean, I actually got a fair amount of gigs out of it. So, but uh, NACA circuit. Yeah, yeah. But it's uh, yeah. My he was like spot on. But I mean, I say we're having a good time. I mean, his his slogan was gas it up or whatever. And I'm like, well, that's not far from we're having a good time. You know? <laughs> <laughs> gas it up. Pedal to the metal. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, With well, the bombing, though. I mean, you know, do you ever, what was coming up? What, what would go through your mind after that night? You know, like, am I really meant to do this? Is that, you have those kind of doubts creep in? Oh, yeah. I mean, those doubts can still come in even yeah. now. Right. But it's like. You know, After back, all the validation too. Yeah, back then it was it was harder because yeah, you would bomb and it was like it might be your only show that week. Right. So you're like you go out and you think you know I'd be single. I hope you know hope to meet 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 a girl or something. After I'm like I hope this goes well and then and then you bomb and it's like because when you do well, people come up to you. They go, oh man, that was really great. Let me buy you a drink. Let's hang out. Let's, <laughs> you bomb. You, know, tell you. you bomb like people. They go, man, it takes a lot of balls to get up there. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god but it's, you gotta go through it I yeah would, i would not want to bomb oh my god but you've you've had like rich has had you've had a lot of success in your natural talent Com comedy i think anybody who's naturally born to do it is still gonna bomb no matter what yeah right Mm. <clears throat> they're going to have to be go through, you know, Seinfeld did it. Dangerfield did it. The greats did it. Yeah. They have they, to go through it. You know, somebody said <clears throat> one time, like, especially work in the road, they said, if you never bomb, then you're hack is right. what they said, because you're not trying new things. You're not yeah. challenging yourself. And that is, it gets hard. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of in that spot sometimes right now where I'm like, I'm doing so many different clubs where people have never seen me that I'm, I'm so used to just, I can, I'm like, I can just do these jokes that they've never heard, but yeah. doing some TV stuff kind of forces you to at least change them a little bit. Yeah. Well, now what happens when you go to visit that market for the second and third time? Do you feel a responsibility to change the show every yeah, time? I mean, my, I like the Seinfeld approach. His approach was always like, add a little bit, take a little bit out, yes. add a little bit. So my set I might have I might have some jokes in there I've been doing for two or three years, but that all the stuff around it would be brand new, right? You know, but if you're seeing my Nashville show every every month, there might not be that much different, right? But it's like you it might not be that much different from month to month, but like if you come one month and then four months later, it could be almost all different, right? You know? Yeah, you know that the, the, just the bravery involved in just going oh out on that gosh. stage. I took a um, I am. A, Upright Citizens Brigade Level One Funny. I took a uh, oh yeah. I took an improv class <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, in Hollywood. So my, you know, I'm surrounded by these people that are really serious about it, and they're like, and there was like series regulars on television shows, and they're like, "What do you do?" And I'm like, "I'm a musician. And I've been playing drums since 1976." And they're like, "Oh, okay." And then you just throw it. You just jump into the deep end of the pool at these people, you know? Oh yeah. And um, and then I I just uh, took a two week comedy intensive with a with a teacher in Los Angeles named Leslie Kahn. And she's Sebastian Maniscalco's uh, coach. Okay. Comedy coach. Yeah. And that was great because all those people were like, there's only trying to do one thing in life and that is be funny and act. Oh yeah. And so I grew immensely in those two weeks. Yeah. Improv is intense too, especially in those cities. I mean, it is like, that is, I mean, the most elitist type crowd. Oh yeah. Is the improv people. It's yeah. You got the, um, you got the groundlings and you got second city and you got UCB and they all have their own cult rules and and uh philosophies and oh, yeah. clubs and you know it takes about eight or nine years to become a um groundlings top level performer it's like i'll be dead i can't do that i'm not going oh, yeah. i'm not going that route you know yeah it's into i've seen a couple of shows the yeah. groundlings shows i mean yeah. sketch show i saw so good it's the best sketch show i ever saw so good i mean it's so good but it's uh yeah it's uh it's a, life, it's a life commitment. Yeah. Now, do you see yourself, um, uh, like when you sell these sitcoms, do you see yourself starring in one of them? Is that a goal? Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, I would like to do that potentially. I mean, I'd like some kind of show just to give me some kind of platform, you know, mm -hmm. that's a little bigger than what I have. Right. Um, but, you know, it's like, I just feel like things will come in due time. Like if it's supposed to happen, it'll happen. I feel like if you just work hard in what you're, the field that you're in, take some risk, then things will happen, right? Yeah. It's like, I don't, feel any pressure to be like, oh, I got to do this today. That's like when talking about the age thing. I mean, some people think that it's a, you know, I shouldn't 
talk about my age and I don't go around shouting it to the rooftops, yeah. right? But I I just did, sorry. Yeah, that's okay. But I don't <laughs> I'm not worried about it, right? Because I feel like if you're always working at comedy, then you can't get too old for comedy, mm -hmm. right? Because if you're always like, like who is it? Uh, now I can't think of his name, but uh, he just came to, very famous. I think he um, he had two shows, uh, older shows. One where he ran a hotel, and I don't know why I can't think of his name. Uh, he ran, ran a hotel. hotel. and then Bob Newhart? Bob Newhart, yes. yeah. He's like in his 90s. Still doing it. And he came here in Nashville last year and did a show. Yeah. And it's like, you don't get less funny as long as you're working at it. As long as you're just paying attention to what's going on around. Yeah. I feel like people that stop paying attention become irrelevant because all their jokes are not up with the times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but as long, you know, I just feel like you just get better and you get sharper and you get better stories. Yeah. Acting and comedy have uh, no uh, age limit restrictions. And yeah. That's why I've been so into it because, you know, I, I'll probably die with the sticks in my hands, but I do have these other interests and it's like really fun to explore, you know. I, I, I always wondered how um, a lot of sitcom... Uh, comedians stage comedians road comedians end up getting sitcoms but they have no really no acting training but they just rise to the occasion they're like look at you already know how to deliver a joke you already know about the rules of comedy you already know about timing the only thing you got to do is work on blocking some camera technique and memorizing lines right and so you learn pretty quick when you're doing that in front of a live audience yeah that's what my manager told me she was like uh she was like you know don't worry about because i told her i was like i don't know if i can act well enough to be in a show she said don't worry about that you know we'll, we'll get you that we'll get you acting coaches yeah, don't worry they're about out that. there and i've done lots of improv like i can do some acting mm -hmm. but that's what i always i always said to her i was like maybe i'll just do a uh maybe i'll write the show but i'll be a side character she's like don't worry about that she's like roseanne wasn't an actor either until you know but as the seasons progressed she got better and better yeah you know for sure yeah it's bound to happen yeah i love all those shows the mike the mike and molly's and the all the chuck Lorre shows are just so yeah. epic they're so good the writing is so great yeah i mean the shows that i'm into like they're a little older like seinfeld i love i just bought some dvds mm -hmm. of that and i've been i've been crushing that i love that uh um the office is great Fantastic. Uh, the office. uh king of queens mm -hmm. with I loved uh, it uh so good jerry stiller i could watch jerry stiller all day his timing oh my god i could watch yeah i mean he, I wish he was in Seinfeld more, but yeah. uh, I love that guy. I like it. Yeah, that. Oh, yeah, I do. And what about Friends? I mean, oh, they, Friends was great too. I mean, yeah. the, the, just, Everybody seems to be trashing Friends all the time now, but what a great show! They're Had trashing it because it's still relevant. And the writing was so good, yeah. and their mm -hmm. delivery. You know, the, those actors are still making fifty grand a day. Wow, a day for the last fifteen years for doing nothing. Wow. That's incredible. That is incredible. That's like the holy. Ah. And that's why you don't. That's why you don't see except for Jennifer Aniston. That's why you don't see them in a lot of yeah. Stuff. It's tough to be motivated when you're making fifty grand a day. I mean, <laughs> Jennifer Aniston went on to just crush. Oh you know, yeah, horrible she, bosses. I mean, she, she was yeah, great. She, oh my she, God, she was. Home and that. those girls were not ugly. No. Well, and she's willing. She's almost willing to make fun of herself and putting in her herself in a role like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, not a very flattering role. Yeah. You know. She looked so. good in it, though. Oh, she looked great in it. But, I mean, the, the character she played was kind right. of... Were you more of a Jennifer Aniston guy or a Courtney Cox guy? Well, it's hard to say. I really liked uh, Ace Ventura. Yeah. And uh, Courtney Cox, you know, was the love interest in the first. And mm -hmm. I always liked her. And, you know, she was also in the movie Masters of the Universe, which was the He-Man movie. Yeah, Shut with Dolph Lundgren. Yeah. Yeah. I missed that. But yeah. she was also dancing with Bruce Springsteen and Dancing in yeah, the Dark. she was. Yeah. So I like Courtney, but but physically, I mean, I always liked Jennifer Aniston. Yeah. Best. I was a Phoebe guy. Were you? Really? Mm -hmm. You quirky weirdo. Yeah, she was, you know, long blonde hair, and mm -hmm. it was kind of my thing. She was super smart. She She's super cute. smart in real life. Yeah, yeah, she is. Your your process, I'm, I'm curious to ask about what, when do you get the inspiration to notify something, okay, there's something there to, to work? Is well, there, do you sit down and do it, or does it just happen? Well, I try to write down notes all the time. Just yeah. write something down if I think something's funny, and then I just go back to it and try to try to write it and it's like i always make i got little you know like little notes here that i always do and it's just like a little oh on thing. paper yeah. dead trees well i'll do a little bit <laughs> i'll do a little paper a little little phone you know and i just kind of write stuff down and then i try to try to throw one of these out in a show once in a while see and, if it works yeah see what see what happens you know and, i'm not a big fan of when i go to like the you know the hollywood improv or, or uh, the comedy 
what is that the comedy uh, the comedy store. store yeah so I go and I go to the small room you know where they're kind of working out material and every comic just has their phone in their hand but because it, it, they get to looking at their notepad but it looks like they're reading their messages it's like yeah. it, it's very distracting I don't like it either get a piece of or look at a note card or something right. you know just that's pr- what I do I like to do a whole thing here and then I don't I, you like know, the phone then I got you know Cracker Barrel jokes and uh, stuff like that and <laughs> yeah some of these I t- took a lot of my jokes that weren't really working I made them tweets and some of them do really well. Oh, you but do I, the funny tweets. But I, I try to, I mean, but... Uh, you know what's funny about Cracker Barrel that I just learned? What? I talked to somebody who was a server, and she said that if you can do Cracker Barrel, you can work anywhere. I heard that too. That's interesting. I know girls that used to work there, and they said that used, they used to cry all the time. <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. They're saying yeah. that if you can work there, if you, if you can, can handle if you can it. handle Cracker Barrel, you can hand you can work at Cracker Barrel's in New York City of restaurants. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, right that down. Oh, because the menu is so large? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Or is it because it's got it's got old crotchety people as the main clientele? I do I want no to write idea. that down. <laughs> That's a good Guys, one. Guys, right? we are we are writing jokes on the Rich Redman show. This Comedy is gold born. Comedy gold. Um so let me ask you this right now. What's the cover tonight? If I give you $10 right now, can I come to the show tonight? I mean, I'll let you come. Can the, I come? The cover is $15. I, I'll, I'll, I'll okay. put you on the I list. I got $15 with me right now. Yeah, well, I, yeah I mean, I can't, I can't come do your show and then make you pay for mine. Well, no, I'll, I'll, I'll pay. Okay. Yeah. But I want to come. Yeah, it's 15 but, bucks. But I'm going to go sit uh, at the bar by myself like some loser. But no, I'm going to go. I want to go. It's a hot comic because you wanted me to come with him and I can't. 7 p.m. sharp? 7 p.m. sharp. All right. And yeah. I'm looking at a good uh, two hours. 90 minutes. Okay. Yeah. You're going to have a couple cocktails. There's, there's two shows tonight. Yeah. So there's one after mine. So yeah. normally I go a bit long. Yeah. At the Z- Nashville show because it's fun. But uh, So there's another show that's not yours at nine o'clock. Yes. Okay. Now the last time I was at Zany's, I saw Sinbad. Oh yeah. Classic. Sinbad's great. He did over two hours, man. They they, so they, they were like, Oh, you know, yeah. it was like a Sunday night or something. And they're like, we want to go home. Yeah. You know, it was crazy because he actually had an eight o'clock show, but the line was so long and it was sold out that no one, no one got seated and started getting the drinks until nine, which made the show 11. And then he had to do a 10 o'clock show, which was now like an 11. Oh, jeez. He was keeping everybody. It was like crazy. Yeah. See, I'm not a fan of that. I don't do that long show. I mean, I say I'll do a little longer, yeah. but I'm not. But I don't like the late start. Yeah. Like if you're going to tell me it's seven o'clock, is it rock? Is that a rock and roll start of eight yeah. thirty, or is it really seven? I mean, I may be slotted to do fifty five and do an hour five, mm-hmm. like ten over. But I'm not. I'm not going all night like that. Now, does your uh, monthly thing at Zanies is that on the same night of the month every time or different? Different, usually a Wednesday, usually okay. a Wednesday, but different. Like I have November 13th, which is today, and right. then I have December 18th. Nice. So. Okay. I am coming. So uh, this is, a, you know, a kind of a fun growing uh, platform for people to uh, sell their wares and talk about their products. Uh, what's uh, anything you want to tell our, our listeners? Well, I mean, I, I mean, I'm really trying to push my YouTube channel because yeah. I like these videos that I'm doing. I don't see anybody doing this sort of thing where I'm, it's a, it'll, it'll be a film of like my whole travels. Like I'll, I'll show a little bit of me be doing morning TV, a right. little bit of what I'm seeing on the road, a little bit of my comedy, a little, you know, I like them and uh, I'll do, I have a thing that I do like resort dusty where if I get a nice hotel and they give me a robe, I'll put the robe on and nice. I'll order room service and I'll, you know, point out things in the room. And so is this <laughs> iMovie? Just drop it into iMovie? I do. Well, I've just got Final Cut. Final Whoa, Cut you're getting out. fancy. Yeah, so I'm, I'm pretty fancy now. Okay, nice. Yeah. So, wow. And yeah, and I got a tour that I'll be doing in 2020. That'll be dropping soon. Yes. The information on that. So DustySlay.com. And what is the YouTube uh, address? Just Dusty Slay. I mean, it'll be whatever the YouTube stuff is slash Dusty Slay. YouTube.com forward slash Dusty Slay. That's it. Man, you're a delight. You're Thank a, you. a very, got a nice positive energy and I can't wait to see your comedy tonight, well, man. I appreciate that. I really am excited. And your publicist, is, is she local? She's not local. She lives in Nebraska, I believe. Because she's great. She is. She great. got right back to Jim. Yeah, she's great. Yeah, really nice. So shout out to your publicist. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man, thanks so much for being here. Yeah, spoke to her on the phone. Too. I really look forward to it, and yeah, we're so proud you. that you're making Nashville proud, man. Well, I'm happy to be here in Nashville, and I love this, and I hope to do more Nashville stuff. I mean, I love it here. Fantastic. So Jim, did you have a good time? I did. What'd you learn? I learned that this is a very funny man and that any craft in life is going to take the sweat of your brow and you might have some missteps, but and you just 
dust yourself off and you look forward to bombing with a smile on your face and uh, sometimes these great things will come into your life like managers and agents and they'll help take things to the next level and he just keeps knocking it out of the ballpark and he's going to build on that. Okay. Absolutely. Can I say on that note, yeah. I um, <laughs> I have a podcast, right? And yeah. I, I, I'm not always so current with doing it, but on season two, episode one through 10, I did a full breakdown on my story and my advice for b- becoming a comic. So I yeah. go from from episode one, it's like from getting off the couch to doing an open mic. 10 steps. To episode 10 is becoming a headliner. 10 easy steps to navigate the right. world of comedy. And I say it's, it's 10 steps. It took me 10 weeks to do, but in reality, it took me 10 years. Yes. You know? yeah. So yeah. Every, every successful person is a 10 year overnight success story. Right. Exactly. Um, and your podcast is We're Having a Good Time with Dusty Slay and Hannah Hogan, and it's on all podcast platforms. It's on iTunes and Spotify. I know of. iTunes and Spotify. Could yeah. be on other things, but. You can just go to your website and find yes. it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I love that. And Jim, what did you learn? I learned that there's a difference between blacking out and passing out. <laughs> Well, the fact that you just learned that now says that you've really taken care of yourself. He's a responsible, and, uh, he's a very just, responsible drinker. I just drinker. recently yeah. passed out, but not because of drinking, because I, I overexerted myself. Oh. And I did it in front of my kids and oh, fell no. off the chair. And what everything. do you mean you overexerted yourself? I was doing a bike ride, and I came back, and I felt like the nausea. You know how you get the nausea coming on when you overdo it? And, yeah. And you're like, yeah. I, just, I just need to sit, get some water in me. And then all of a sudden, the next thing I knew, I, I felt like I took a nap, and I woke up on the floor. Wow. And my, everyone was yelling and Courtney was in my Jam, face. Yeah. Jim. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh wow. Man. You know, the first thing was is that, you know, my kids were, I heard my wife yelling and I was thinking to myself, what did the kids do? What did they do? <laughs> and then all of a sudden I wake up and she's in my face yelling at me and I'm like, oh crap, what did I do? Yeah. <laughs> you, you, were just, you were just probably underslept and under uh, it was, hydrated. Uh, yeah, I was uh, dehydrated. For sure. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. This was so fun. I can't wait to come to the show tonight. Guys, as always, thanks for tuning in. We really appreciate it. Be sure to subscribe, share, rate, and review. It only takes one minute. And if you have guest suggestions or you just want us to tell us what you like about the show, what you don't like about the show, uh, I have an email address for you, Show at gmail.com. As always, I appreciate all your time and talent, my Thank friend. You. The show wouldn't happen without you. And keep coming back for the good stuff, guys. We appreciate it. We'll see you next time. This has been The Rich Redmond Show. Subscribe, rate, and follow along at richredmond.com forward slash podcasts.